I'm Jonathan Cardi and I'm the Glam Organiser for Wikimedia UK. I'm Daria Sabulska and I'm a Program Manager at Wikimedia UK. Glam is an acronym for Galleries, Libraries, Archives and Museums and it's a very convenient acronym for Wikimedia to use because we want to do outreach to the cultural sector. Glam institutions often start working with us by uh, dipping their toes in the water. Uh, for example, hosting a one-off event like an edit-a-thon or a backstage pass. And if it feels like the right sort of cooperation with them, they often move on to hosting a Wikipedia in residence. The chapter's first involvement with Glam was a programme that was run at the British Museum. After the success of the British Museum event in London, we've had further events in London, but we've also gone to Bristol, to Birmingham, to York, Newcastle and Edinburgh. We've had a range of events around the United Kingdom. I'm Liam White. I was the Wikipedia in residence at the British Museum for about five weeks in 2010. So in 2009, I was working in Sydney. And I was a Wikipedian, but I was working in the, in, around the cultural sector, trying to license multimedia from the cultural sector to use in a website, and having great difficulty, which radicalised me into saying, there's got to be a way to do, better way to do this. That ended up being, long story short, ended up being the Glam Wiki conference in Canberra, held at the Australian War Memorial and that brought together for the first time a community of Wikimedians and a community of the cultural sector, put them in the same room and actually met and discussed and it got a lot of important people from the cultural sector in Australia and New Zealand to, to show up. One of the results of that conference was, as a two-day conference, was a list of recommendations in both directions. One of them I slipped into the middle because I wrote the recommendations was have Wikipedians in-house in cultural institutions as Wikipedians in residence. I then shipped that idea, that one recommendation around to all the cultural institutions I knew in Australia and said hello I would like to do that, I would like to be a Wikipedian in residence, whatever that means, with you. I would like to volunteer. Oh no no no, couldn't possibly, all too scary. I happened to be in London a little bit later and Mike Peel and I went around to a couple of cultural institutions to say hello and, and build a proactive relationship. So we had a meeting at the British Museum where we walked in with our ties and sat down with the, editor, with the, um, the web department and told them about a variety of things that we could do, a list, long list of things that we might do. Thanks very much, goodbye. Six months later I had got a phone call from the British Museum saying, we've uh, read your proposal, we've done a risk assessment, we will allow you to fly to London and volunteer for us. I tried to be as innovative as possible, or a lot of those things were the first time they were, had been done. We didn't have a word at the time for editathon, and we still don't have a more generic word for a Hoxham challenge. That has, that's the only time that's been attempted to get everyone who knows about this one topic and lock them in a room with coffee and Wi-Fi. Uh, that's only been done there, but everyone seems to like it. Um, so I'm, I'm most proud about having demonstrated it's possible to break the barrier, not the one individual thing, but to change both communities' perspectives that cultural institutions and Wikimedians can work with each other for mutual benefit. For my own ego's sake, I would like to think that my Wikipedian in residence program, five weeks volunteer at the British Museum was of seminal importance. Maybe it was an idea whose time had come anyway, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I'm Pat Hadley and I was the Wikipedian in residence at York Museums Trust. The great strength of a residency program is that it allows the curators, the volunteers, the other regular staff around a big institution or even a small institution to get used to this idea of, of working with Wikipedia. Within York Museums Trust, I think uh, I've been really lucky that it's an institution in which almost all the staff, all the staff that I've encountered 
share the vision of uh, it being about sharing knowledge first. My name is Ali Crockford and I'm the Wikimedian in Residence at the National Library of Scotland here in Edinburgh. I think that Wikipedia really needs to look at the kind of material that libraries have available. Libraries are repositories of an immense amount of knowledge. Here at the National Library of Scotland alone, something like more than 17 million items in the collection. And that's a collection that grows by about, I think, 500,000 items every year. This is a, an organization that has access to the kind of knowledge that can completely revolutionize the quality of information that Wikipedia makes available. And I think that if you are working towards making the sum of all human knowledge accessible as per the vision of Wikimedia. You have to look at the organizations whose mission has been for the last 100 years, 200 years, doing pretty much the same thing. My name's John Cummings and I was the Wikimedia Residence at the Natural History Museum and Science Museum in London. So the Natural History Museum is quite an unusual place to be a Wikimedia in residence because it's, it's really two institutions. It's the public-facing um, National Museum that has five million visitors a year, but it's also one of the largest biodiversity research centres in the UK and it has 79 million specimens in its collection. The Natural History Museum is a, a wonderful opportunity not only to engage with the public but also with research scientists who have a specialist and contribution to make to Wikipedia that's built over a whole lifetime of knowledge. Museums should care about Wikipedia because it's one of them, the largest information sources for the public they want to educate. And Wikipedia isn't really in competition with what they're doing. Museums can give context and interpretation, whereas Wikipedia is kind of straight facts. I'm John Byrne, I was Wikipedia in Residence at the Royal Society in London in 2014. The Royal Society is the National Academy for the Sciences and Technology in the UK. Its fellows are it's a re a re the recognised uh, top scientists in the UK. The Royal Society is the most prestigious organisation in the scientific sector and it uh, gives Wiki Wikipedia credibility and other organisations in the sector have looked at that partnership. Wikipedia needs uh, more editors and it needs expert editors and expert editors can have a particular role um, checking and reviewing what other people do and it's really crucial that we keep up our body of expert editors. The Royal Society has got a very wide range of contacts throughout the scientific sector at all levels, it's not, not just the fellows and uh, working with them enables us to reach uh, many levels of scientists in this country, which is great. It's a very widely recognised problem in the UK, particularly that uh, women, young women, don't go into science. The Royal Society and the rest of the scientific sector have been making great efforts to address this and uh, they definitely saw Wikipedia as one aspect of that. I think that the issue of diversity is very important in um, a role in science education because women traditionally in science have had a huge contribution that has been under-recognised and that Wikipedia being the um, widely used resource that it is is a, is a wonderful tool to uh, help readdress that. One of the projects that I ran was with uh, ZSL, Zoological Society of London, and we ran an editathon in the pavilion they have there, which is an amazing space. You can look at and there's kangaroos jumping around outside. We focus on um, uh, women in natural sciences. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful event. Um, I think we had 90% women come, which is really nice. I think the effort to include women in the Wikimedia events organised with the National Library of Scotland have been really quite successful. To my knowledge, we have not yet had an event where women have made up less than 50% of the contributors, 
which I think is uh, an incredible achievement. And we've had events where women have made up 90% or even 100%. We also um, have had a lot of events that have focused specifically on women in different areas. We had a very successful Women in Science Edit-a-thon that we held in collaboration with the Medical Research Council and the Royal Society of Edinburgh. Um, and that was quite a large and very successful event, which went really well. I think that Wikipedia reflects some of the biases that are out there in society. So biases um, in terms of gender inequality, um, inequality with respect to race, uh, disability. Um, and I think it's our responsibility to make a conscious effort to redress that bias and those inequalities. Wikimedia having the goal of providing the sum of all human knowledge, it's important that we recognize what that really is and where the gaps are and try and fill in those gaps wherever possible. My name is Andrew Gray and I was the Wikipedia in residence at the British Library during 2012-2013. The residency was funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council and as such, as well as focusing on content-oriented projects in the library itself, we looked at supporting the work of researchers and academics wanting to engage with Wikipedia and wanting to disseminate information through Wikipedia and through similar channels. The British Library has a large and diverse collection of material ranging from a significant philatelic collection, for example, through to contemporary print and large amounts of ancient and otherwise historic manuscript material. We looked at taking some of these collections on a small scale and releasing them through Wikimedia Commons. In many cases, versions of this material existed already, but in lower quality, often third generation scans taken from a book. Whereas we were able to go to original material to get high quality archival images and disseminate these. Currently, around 3,000 articles on Wikipedia are illustrated in some way with an image drawn from the British Library's collections or from material held or otherwise stewarded by the British Library. During the later part of my time there, we worked on releasing a large collection of material from the Canadian Copyright Collection. Because this material, which was all photographs, had been gathered in a relatively controlled fashion under copyright deposit law, we knew the exact copyright status of it and we were able to say with confidence that it was all in the public domain. Wikimedia UK and the Eccles Centre for American Studies supported the digitisation of this material. And then we were able to release it to Wikimedia Commons, but also release it on the British Library's own infrastructure. One of the most interesting parts of this collection was that because it was obtained through copyright deposit and through legal deposit, it was non-selective. Anything someone chose to regis register for copyright was included in the collection. Almost every other significant photographic collection from the period, this is around the turn of the century, has been curated in some way. Someone has chosen to select, this is significant, this is interesting, this, this isn't really relevant, it's pictures of cats, we don't care about cats. Whereas we were able to find some remarkably interesting ephemeral material within the Canadian collection, such as, for example, a 12 photograph set of pictures of cats posing with newspapers. We have no idea why someone in Toronto in 1900 chose to pay to get these pictures copyrighted, but they did. And we feel that there is clearly a very interesting story here for a researcher in the future. We simply would not have known about this without the combination of this collection and the attempt to digitise it. I think GAMS should host the Wikimedia in residence to show they're serious about open knowledge and to do something about it. I'd like to think that working with Wikimedia caused the cultural institutions in the UK think more seriously about open knowledge and for example include it in their um, strategic objectives. Another thing that I tend to see now is that when an institution does for example a digitization project they include in the planning thinking about how they're going to share it openly afterwards for example on the Wikimedia project. Having the residency has led to YMT being more open. Um, I think 
It was preaching to the choir in that they are an institution that was keen on digital and keen on uh, opening up their collections uh, anyway. But the Wikipedia project has kind of acted as a catalyst. It's, actually, it's accelerated the process. The key shift, which I think is happening globally and they've latched onto, is that they're working now on assumption of openness rather than an assumption of closed. I'm really impressed with the way that the library has changed its attitude towards its material. They're still a little bit hesitant, but they are increasingly becoming more open. They've already identified a couple of thousand images that they're, they're keen to release over the, the coming months, which I'm very excited to see happen. And I think that the material is going to be really interesting. It also means that going forward, as the library digitizes more material, that material will also be able to go up on Wikimedia Commons. So I think it's a significant step towards developing an, a sustainable partnership with Wikimedia. There's a lot of benefit both ways for the Royal Society and Wikipedia working together. We get improved content uh, and they get um, improved coverage of science generally, which is a large part of what they are about. The role at the Royal Society has attracted quite a lot of interest from other learned societies, as they're called. I would certainly encourage all of them to explore what they can do with Wikipedia. To encourage museums to work with Wikipedia, what I would say is that it's where most people are looking for information, and it's, it's this balance between being curator and being a gatekeeper to the information. And I think that what Wikipedia does is it allows you to release the information in a way that is truly worldwide. What I'd say to museums is if you only have information on a website, it, it really puts the onus on the person looking for the information to know uh, which museum has it, where on their website it is. If you put things on Wikimedia projects, if you provide information to Wikimedia projects, it really does allow uh, the whole world to help you share your information. The Wikimedia movement and, the, and Wikipedia should engage with GLAMs, museums, libraries, archives, galleries, the lot, because um, they, for the last hundred years, have been the guardians of society's knowledge, of, uh, of cultural knowledge and natural and scientific knowledge. And uh, Wikipedia has become the de facto uh, first stepping point in finding knowledge uh, for 90% of people in the in the connected world and as a result the, the key sources for that knowledge the key guardians of that knowledge who have always had a mission to share need to be engaging with the most effective uh, mechanism the most effective system for sharing their knowledge if I were advising a library on how to start working with Wikimedia my first point of advice would be to do it now. Don't wait. Don't sit there and have meeting after meeting after meeting. When it comes to Wikimedia, take the plunge. Just go for it. The line I use at every single at the end of every single presentation is we're doing the same thing for the same people in the same medium for the same reason, just in a different way. And so therefore we should be doing it together. Plain and simple. Could be the final time you see me If you don't mind, let's make the most of all this empathy Call me a coward, please It's plain to see that now I'm back on Shingle Street I'm rolling over all the rocks And back onto my feet Call me a waste of your time Please just draw a line in the sand that I could be If you just cross me with a lie I was skipping on the surface of where I shouldn't be And with the swinging of your arms Yeah, you threw me at the sea We are on a curve, it's on the road There was pain, so my return to Shingle Street doesn't have to be in vain, no.